have much more the, the, you have much more of this motion instead of the, this is like a trombone there holding the horn. <coughs> the old days they were much smarter because they they held the violin with their hand and they held it here. And then it became chin held. And so, so when it became chin held, they held it here, first position. So now when I hold it here, this fingerboard is 11 inches long. But if I hold it here, it's only five and a half inches each way. I'm cutting it in half. So I'm much better off holding it here than here, you see. So that was a it was a bad thing about about that change it when they when invented this, be it changed from handheld to chin held. That was the two the two systems. And the, the, that last one we do it with not good. Chin held. Because chin held is also very bad for your neck. You do this. Before that, you held it here. You didn't have to you could leave your hand here, okay, here. I'm holding it here. But then they shifted it. They held it here instead. When, when it was handheld, you had to keep one foot on the ground here. Your thumb was a fix. You keep a fix. And when being chin held, you had no more fix. You went like this. So you, instead of moving, instead of moving your finger, you move the whole arm. So I always tell the kids, go with the finger. If you go with the finger, the arm comes along. But if you go with the whole arm, see, if I do this, it's, it's easy. It's a small motion. But if I do this, it's a major. This is a major motion, moving the whole arm. If I do that, I'm only moving the finger. So you go with the finger. So I say, go with the finger, the arm will come along. There's no. It's attached, doesn't have any choice about it. So that's easy rule to remember. Go with the finger. The rule of well, every bow, <coughs> every bow is different. Mm, some, some, if you, if you, if you screw the bow up like that, you're doing a lot of damage. You're weakening the stick. When it's too tight. Yeah. Then be busy. In, in time, your stick is going to get very weak. As a matter of fact, the, the, the people don't realize it. The, the bow, when they make it, is <clears throat> it's just a straight stick. You know, it does. It's not cut this way. They take a straight stick and they put it over a flame, and you do this hot. You you can and you can you can if if I have a, a stick that's old and weak, it I can strengthen it again by they put it over and they re recalibrate the, the this this they make it they can make it again. They do it over again. They make more arch in here by putting it over over a flame and then bending it over a flame. But you can give it to the ball maker, but it's very dangerous when he does it. If he bends it too much, he he break. <laughs> this is there's only one it's all this from Brazil is Pernambuco. It's just one one uh, <coughs> the one wood they use. <coughs> the old one, I don't know if I have it here. No, here. I think you can tell the best wood. 
<laughs> That's darker. The darker the better. You get old. When it's dark, then it's more dense. It's heavier. So, because it's heavier, I don't have to make it so thick and make it thinner. So it has more flexibility. If it's Otherwise, it gets. Have to make it. It's then it gets uh, thick. It gets uh, clubby. Uh, that's why the old French bows were. They were the the best violins were Italian, but the best bows were French. They made all the best bows were were French bows. They, they were more. They were more elegant. The strings. And you get a new bow. <coughs> most of them are. Clubs, <laughs> clubby, not, not. Uh, uh, they lack <coughs> when they're too thick, they lack the flexibility. You want you want flexible strength. You don't want uh, too thick. It's no good. And if it's thin, it's hard to get enough. Has to be strong enough wood to be thin. The stronger the wood, the thinner you can make it. And then more, you get more flexibility. And that's why. You know, with uh, well, two points. One, you you mentioned how damaging it is to the stick to screw <coughs> screw it too tight. But in the past, you've told me how Fritz Chrysler used to screw his bow very tight. Yeah, what, but then he got a, a, a new bow every couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> he used to go to Hill. Mm. He used to screw the bow quite tight, like maybe like that. What Probably. effect does that have on the sound? You get more, uh, you get more attack. The, the hair is tighter. The hair, the hair is loose like that. You wouldn't get any attack at all. The, the, if that's see that's too loose, you couldn't. I'm hitting the wood. The wood's hitting the thing. Well, it depends on the stick. I mean, it's it's it's, it's gonna be. It should go down, but it shouldn't. It, it shouldn't go. It has to be tight enough. To go here, but not touching the string. It not touched. This shouldn't be touching. If if it touches, then the bow is. If it's too loose, now it's, it's too loose. If it's too tight, too tight. You can do it too tight, but you ruin the stick. It's it's not. It's not good. The more you screw it up, you know, it weakens the stick, the tighter it is. And uh, it also it makes a, uh, this, there's a difference in the, if it's too tight, the bounce is too, the bounce is too, 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 sh the bounce is too, bounce is too, too hard because you want you want to bounce. The bounce is like this. It's it's lengthwise. It's not because that if it bounces off this way, you you don't get any sound. This hitting, it's a stroke. That's what we say. Both strokes. It's a, this is stroke, and this is. That's why we play. We play with the bow this way. We don't play it flat. Flat is it, it's too too stiff. It, it, the bow is too stiff. We play with it. We we play on the side here. So all the hairs that break are always on 
on, on that side. Well, most kids don't rise in the, uh, they don't rise in the bowl enough. Of course, you could put too much rising too, but you have to, in order to know if you have enough rising, you you play a very high note. If there's a, if if the sound doesn't continue, if they don't have enough rising in there, the sound's going to stop. Because that's friction which is making it. Friction. If it's too too loose, it's not going to have any. They they turn. The the hair has follicles. You know it has follicles on it. So they got to turn it both ways. Otherwise you'd have you'd have it would only play one direction. <laughs> the, you can't see them, but they're, they're tiny, tiny follicles all the way up, and they—they, they, uh, that's why they get Siberian horses. I mean, the, the the horses from the east have thicker, thicker hair. You get a re hair if you get a re hair, and it breaks all the time. It, they didn't give you good. Good, good, good hair. They pay, pay quite a bit. The, the body maker gets a whole bunch of hair like that, but he's got to pay. To get good, good hair, he's got to pay the price of rehair. I don't know, it's about hundred dollars more. Depends where. You know, you get good. How do you like your bows rehaired? How loose is the hair before it's been tightened? Uh, how, how can well, you no, the, the guy who he has it has to know. Uh, <coughs> you have to know uh, the, the dry weather. When it's dry, the hair shrinks. So if it's if it's too if it's too uh, too dry, I won't be able to to loosen the bow. This is okay. See, that's okay. But if if it's if when I loosen it, if it's like this, if it's like that, the hair's too short. So it depends. Uh, the the guy who rehairs it has to know what the weather is. He, if it's dry weather, he's got to make it a little bit longer. If it's damp, he's got to make it shorter. Depends on the weather because it changes. It changes. Mm, the weather change has a lot of effect on the on the length. Used to have on the also on the strings. We used to play with gut strings, so um, they were much more affected. Now we play with wound. Are there any last minute? Uh, bits of advice you want to pass along to your viewers about bowing technique? That's a hard question. <coughs> if you had to put it in a nutshell, as a man who's been called the aristocrat of the bow, how do you sum it up? Why do you see the bow? They could see the violin too. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if you could get a mirror. He, if you get a mirror, uh, most people, <coughs> you know, you, you can see, you can see the ball well, uh, see, or or on, on a mirror, you can see, you can see how the ball goes. A, mi a mirror would be good. I just want to thank you, Maestro Ricci, for sharing so generously 
from your lifetime's wealth of experience. Thank you very much. Hello. Thank you.